Hi everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass Algebra 2. So in this video we're going to go over how to solve a quadratic equation with two imaginary solutions. Then you can try the practice questions at the end of this video on your own. So first, what is a quadratic formula? What is a quadratic equation? So quadratic equation is um, always takes the standard form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So at this point, we should be familiar with these. If you haven't, please check out I have a video on this before going any further. And when we are using the quadratic formula, we always want to find the x values of the quadratic equation. So the x values of a quadratic equation are always just where, once this equation is graphed, where does it fall on the x-axis? So if we have a parabola, where does it hit the x-axis? So that's what we're trying to find when we use the quadratic formula. But when we have imaginary solutions, the graph never actually hits the x-axis. So here, we have when we have imaginary roots, the quadratic equation does not have any real roots the, and never hits the x-axis. So notice that in this quadratic equation here, the parabola, the shape of the graph, is just kind of floating and never hits the x-axis. So this is the x-axis. And we're used to um, having parabolas that hit the x-axis somewhere along here. We're able to find its roots. So with this, this is different and we have to use the quadratic formula to find those x values, those imaginary roots. So let's look at our example here. We are asked to find the x values of the following, x squared plus 2x plus 5. So we're going to use that quadratic formula. So let's write that out. We have x squared equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So yeah, there's there's multiple, there's different ways to memorize this thing. Um, back in the day, my teacher made me sing Paco's a Weasel, um, the formula to Paco's a Weasel to this. So maybe that can work for you. I'm not going to sing it here for you because no one wants to hear that. Let's continue with this question. So the first thing we're going to want to do is identify the coefficients. So that's what a, b, and c represent. So just a reminder of where that comes from. That comes from the quadratic equation in standard form. So that comes from ax squared plus bx plus c. A, we have these a, b, c's. These are the coefficients. So a, b, c. The coefficients or the whole numbers that come before each variable. Or just the whole numbers. So if you look for our a, b's, and c's, they'll be underlined in blue. So whenever notice x, there's no number next to x. Whenever there's no number next to x, we always know that the coefficient is actually 1. So let's just write out our coefficients on the side here. We have a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2, and c is equal to 5. So just writing these out on the side will make filling in this formula so much easier. So now let's fill it in. We have x equals negative b, so negative 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared. 2 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 5. And then this is all over 2 times a, which is 1. So now, so this is a lot to, to look at and to calculate, so let's just do this one step at a time. I always like to do everything under the radical first, so let's calculate that. So when we do that, so I just, you could just do this by plugging into your calculator, uh, super easy. So, and when we do that, we get negative 2 plus or minus radical negative 16 over 2. So that negative 16 stands out, right? Because we are not, we're never allowed to have a negative in a radical, under a radical. So that's where the imaginary roots and those imaginary numbers come in. So, so when we uh, simplify negative radical negative 16, we get negative 2 plus or minus 4i all over 2. So these numbers are really nice to work with. Notice we can simplify this further. Negative 2 divided by 2 is just equal to 1, and then that plus or minus remains the same. And then 4 divided by 2 is 2 again, and we keep that i. So then this part, um, we are al we're almost done uh, finding the x values to this equation here. We just need to split this into two. So the reason that we have plus or minus is because there are two answers here. We, we get x is equal to negative one plus two i, and then we get x equals negative one minus two i. So that's how the answer splits up into this plus or minus. 
so that's our answer. We get x equals negative 1 plus 2y, and we get x equals negative 1 minus 2y. So we have both of those answers as a solution to our question. So if you're looking for more, check out the practice questions right here. The answers are up in the blog and in the description below. And if this video helped you, or if you're looking to make math suck just a little bit less, please give it a like and subscribe. Thanks so much for stopping by, and happy calculating! Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating!